it feels good to be back. It's a beautiful day in Monaco. Uh, as you may know, our offices are in the porch. Yeah. So we have uh, a very privileged uh, view here. And um, the, the, boat, the, the port is coming back into life as well. So Monaco is coming back into life. The restaurants opened this week. Some of them, not all. Cafes, you know, uh, Paris and terraces and stuff. So, so that's kind of oof, nice. <laughs> it's been very quiet for a long time, for a very long time. Much longer than I think anyone anticipated. When so it all how, started. Long, how long were you at home for? Um, I... I I think nearly two and a half months. So I went to the restaurants open on Tuesday. I went to the same restaurant. I had the last meal in, which was on the 14th of March. That was that night. All the restaurants closed down. Wow. And I had a meal with the same friends and in the same restaurant this week on Tuesday. That I think that was the 2nd of, or 3rd of June or something. So it's been the, been a long while. Quite a change for me personally as well to to not to move. You know, as most people in this business, we're all traveling a lot. It's a very international business, so we all, you know, every week we're going somewhere, right? So spend so many consecutive nights in at home. Um, it's been a real um, interesting um, experience for me. Um, I don't think I've done this since I was a student, to be honest. So you're talking to Australia and China about the space cats. So let's uh, let's let's yeah. let's get onto those. I mean, quite a departure for Silver Yachts, um, a new catamaran series. So can you just tell us a bit about how they came to be and the kind of because uh, obviously Silver Yachts <laughs> a long, sleek, efficient aluminium hulls, you know low volume for the length relatively but you know super sleek super cool now suddenly a catamaran series so how did that all happen um it may not um uh, be immediately apparent but there is a strong link um if you take a cat apart it consists of two hulls and a bridge um a deck that bridges the two and connects uh, which connects the two hulls. So the two hulls are, if you look at them individually, an even more extreme version of the silver hulls, as you have seen them uh, in all the silver fast and, and, and the molds and so on, which are basically very slender hulls. Um, um, why uh, slender hulls? Because they are extremely efficient. Um, we are talking about displacement type hulls. Uh, actually some of the fast displacement type hulls um, where wave making is very it's a dominant part of the overall uh, resistance at the higher speeds and the only way to really considerably reduce the wave resistance is to have a slender hull with a finer um, entries in the bow and uh, and, and a carefully designed aft ship um, this um, we've taken that to uh, an even um, more extreme with the two holes on the on the on the silver cat or the space cat as we call it um, but the fact that you are combining two holes gives you an incredible opportunity to create a lot of living spaces that um, you know the, the, the silver or the space cat is 35 meters long but is 13 0.3 meters wide, if I remember that correctly, and um, a 13 meter boat is basically the beam of a typical 75 meter yacht. Um, the space is usable all the way up to the bow mm. because the bow is basically a, a, a straight line, uh, uh, and um, I don't know whether um, people will fully understand the concept until they come on board. But from my own experience in cruising, uh, uh, you tend to spend most of the time awake on deck and even outside. Um, time you spend in the cabins is mostly for sleeping and, uh, and uh, getting ready to go for breakfast or lunch or dinner or changing or, you know, it's a kind of a tra transient space in a way. Um, uh, most time awake is spent on deck with the views and if the weather permitting you would be outside and 
the cat lends itself very well to that because the volumes in the hull are fairly small. You have your engine rooms and the technical spaces and typically the crew spaces in there, but most of the guest spaces are on deck. Um, and and that, that gives you the possibility to play with big windows, um, bring the views in, get, bring the light in. And, and uh, this is quite a, a uh, if you were to look at proportions of living spaces with possibly with large windows on a cat, it will be much higher than on a on a monohull, because you have more of the living spaces above the main deck, which is typically considered the bulkhead deck, so you can have big windows. Um, so I'm very very excited about it because it most yachts in a way are floating homes, and it gives you the possibility to create something much more exciting um, you're less limited by the length to beam ratio and you can create spaces in a completely different way um, at the same time you can be extremely efficient and this is something which again is aligned with silver yachts being built in aluminium being lightweight and with slender hulls we are able to operate at speeds with a very modest power um, the space cat uh, will be um, operating at, at, at cruising speeds of about 14 knots um, with uh, I would nearly say ridiculously low cons consumption we are hoping we can get her up to about 20 plus knots but like most yachts it will probably operate at a more leisurely you know, sort of 14 15 knots but we are expecting um, fuel consumptions of a little bit, little more than 60 liters an hour, which is not a lot. No. Um, so uh, there is a link. It may not be immediately apparent because one just looks long and sleek and the other one looks short and bulky. But below that bulkiness, if I may say, there is a, there are two very sleek hulls, uh, which is the common link. So there is an aspect of this multi-hulls or catamarans that um, has to do with I, sh I think acceptance in the market we all have these ideas of what uh, a beautiful yacht is as with most things a beautiful car or, or a beautiful building they may differ from people to people but in 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 a way um, people are not used to seeing yachts of the multi-hull type and, and catamarans so there have been some attempts in the past. They haven't been successful. There's a very beautiful one done by Bannerberg called Moeka, which was built in Australia, actually, um, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, and there has been some more recently done in Asia as well. I do hope that we will see more of them in the future. People will really understand. Um, there are some other builders that are working on something slightly smaller, more, more or less production uh, cats. Exactly. And I think they will gain acceptance in the market. It takes time, these things. You know, the, the, whenever something new is brought out, uh, then it'll take a bit of time for people to adjust and appreciate it. And then it'll fall into place and it'll, be, um, it'll become the new norm somehow. Um, you can see the same thing in the car industry, in, in other industries as well, fashion. Yeah, because they, they seem to answer two key um, challenges of the, of, of the moment. They're more efficient and they provide more volume. Everyone's packing more and more volume into boats all the time yeah. and everyone's demanding cheaper fuel bills. So catamarans make yeah. perfect sense, yet there, there are so few of them. So do you think now, now is the time, finally, <laughs> we'll see. Well, I, I think that, as I said, I think there are, timing is, is the key thing here. Um, the yachting industry today is far less conservative than it was 10 years ago and far less conservative than it was 20 years ago, if you see what I mean. We have a group of clients that may not have that sort of luggage or you know the past of you know traditional yachts and and so on so they may, may be more open-minded to towards you know what the yacht is is or should be um 
So I think we may be at the point in time now where the conjunction between uh, new client groups coming onto the market and where people also realize that a yacht is, for most people, um, a floating home, that for most people is a coastal adventure. Very few clients do um, ocean crossings on their yachts. I'm talking about motor yachts, not, mm -hmm. not sailing yachts. So I think when you realize that probably 9% of yachts with the guests on board, they're doing coastal cruising, the cats or the multi hulls lend themselves very well to that. When you, if you were to undertake an ocean crossing, then obviously there is a limit at which your bridging deck, if you like, that connects the two hulls will start slamming if the wave height reaches the height from the static waterline up to that. So depending on the size of the craft, this may be two meters, it may be four meters, and of course the height between the deck and the surface. So this is, you may, you may call it a limitation. But in reality, um, nothing more so than I think most yachts that are in the 30 meter range, even 40, they cross the oceans on, on, on cargo ships and the dock expresses and the like. Or else you could do a routing, weather routing the day is, is easily done and, and you can make sure that you have good weather and fair weather when you do the crossing. So I, I think in reality, it, it is not such a limitation. That's the only downside I see to a multi hull today. Um, if you're prepared to accept the aesthetics of it. And I think, as I said, I think that's something that will come like we have seen in the past when with new concepts of the cars that, you know, uh, when they came in first where people were skeptical and, and at the end, uh, whether SUVs or two volume cars that uh, many decades ago were looked at as, you know, what is this? This doesn't really uh, make sense, but in the end, uh, they have become commonplace today. So we will see, time will show. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it makes sense to me. I, I, I'd love to see more cats on the water. So the, the 35 meter space cat, the, the equivalent volume in a monohull, what would that be? So 40 or 50, 45 or 50 meter boat? Probably, I haven't done that comparison to be honest, but uh, yes, I think so, yeah. Even possibly a bit bigger, yeah, yeah. Again, I think a better comparison would be livable common spaces or livable spaces on deck and inside. I should do that comparison, I haven't done it, but uh, for sure there's much more of it on the a, on a 35 meter cap and on a 35 meter monohull. Yeah. Would it be the equivalent of a 50, 60 meter boat? I would think so, yeah. Yeah. And so, so a 13 meter beam. Yeah, yeah. So when are we gonna see the first one uh, on the water? <laughs> Um, by this time next year, it, it, should be, um, it should be in the water actually before. Uh, we're hoping to undertake sea trials um, in the spring of uh, 2021. Yeah. And she's being built in China at the moment. At the new yeah, she's being built in China, correct. Yeah, at the new facility of Silvio in China, mainland China. So, yeah. The Silviot's model, or Guido's model, is to start these hulls on spec and obviously find a buyer during production. So how many space cats are you going to build? Or are you just going to get the first Hopefully. one? Get a buyer. <laughs> Correct. Okay. And we'll then, see how the market reception is, and, uh, and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. But you know, we're building this first one on spec, for sure. And, um, and um, being built in Asia, she will, of course, first... Uh, we've shown around in Asia and we hope to bring her over here as well to, to show the European public and uh, enthusiasts that it's, it's something very interesting. Um, we, will, uh, we can build uh, many more and we hope to build many more. We will see how the reaction is, but I believe the timing is right now. And uh, particularly with regard to the, uh, we all see in, uh, in the last, Two years, I would say, in particular the last year, um, people are more concerned about the environment, and, and this is right up that line. Uh, so, and and uh, 
So I, I, I can't, I'd be surprised if it doesn't hit it off with lots of people. We will see. I may be wrong, but. And the, I mean, you, when you, in your discussions with clients, so that's something you're seeing, experiencing firsthand. I mean, some of the clients you work with, I mean, you can see some of the boats behind you. You build enormous boats for these people. So are they demanding more efficient boats? Are they saying, Espen, this has to be as green as it can possibly be? Yes. Since, I would say since a couple of years, clients have, there's definitely asking more and more often these questions. Before it was mostly journalists like yourself, you're like yourself who would bring it up. But uh, yes, you can see that. Not many clients have been talking about multi holes taking, taking it this far. And uh, that's why it's, that's when it's, it's interesting to do what we do with Sylvie Arts because there is no client. Uh, so you can do in a way what you think is right, yeah. which is what we did with the first silvers um, and which is what we're doing now. And you design something without a specific client in mind, rather a market or potential market. And um, yeah, it's quite a, a bold undertaking for the lack of a better word, but it's, 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 um, we're just doing a, um, uh, we have been doing, and it was launched at the Düsseldorf boat, so our first uh, small production boat, which is a, a planing uh, 10 and a half meter, 37 feet uh, boat. Um, uh, the process was a bit the same. There, there is no specific client you have a dialogue with. There is a marketplace and you try and identify what the right boat is for that marketplace today. Um, here we're trying to go a bit further than today, but tomorrow. So we'll, we'll, we'll see where it takes us. But it's been what we've been doing with Silver Yachts now for. We started the first Silver Yacht was delivered, I think, in 2007. And we started designing the concept and talking about it in the early 2000s, I think. Um, and we got serious about it in set up the operations in Australia back in 2003, four, if I remember correctly. The, the ambition presumably is to stretch this range where the market, where, where the market takes it. So it could be a 55 meter, a 65 meter eventually. Obviously that, that's the ambition for the yeah. market. Correct. We will see how it is being perceived in the marketplace. Obviously, um, marinas will have to follow suit. You know, the, 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 the thing that is specific is, of course, the length to the beam ratio, which is uh, very different from monohulls. Most marinas in Europe, at least, are not really geared up for, for cats. Mm. Um, so we will see how, how that is being dealt with. Um, I'm sure that in the same way that we have seen the sizes of cars grow and, and parking lots have become bigger to accommodate them, we will see the same thing hopefully in the marinas as well. But uh, yeah. the plan is to, uh, to, to also design bigger boats, possibly even smaller. Um, yeah. The operations in China seem to be, you know, they're fully back in full operation now after the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and um, and uh, there is potentially a lot of capacity there. Yeah, and that, that so that's something. To, there was some significant Chinese investment in Silver Yachts. Uh, yeah, recently, and that so that just allowed a better production uh, presence in mainland China and a, a ramping Correct. up of yeah. Um, yeah. production for things like the Space Cat. It, you know, you, you're yeah. able to take more risks, obviously, if you're if your backing is uh, is sufficient. The backing is from China's largest aluminium producer, so they have a vested interest in. Yeah. That's a nice synergy, there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, it's a good material for boat building and um, and uh, and yacht building. Uh, it's it's lightweight um, and it's also very easily recyclable, uh, which is uh, another issue that. Um, uh, will come up on the radar soon, I guess, particularly with the glass fiber boats. Yeah. Uh, you can already see it. it's, it's what do we do with them at the end of the lifetime life cycle? It's, it's, 
it's not a problem our industry not easy. Is for, really. Yeah, no. So uh, it's it's the material that we all very. Um, I think we we should embrace more. There are not that many shipyards in today who build all aluminium boats, but um, there's no reason not to really. Weight is the two big enemies of efficiency are weight and and beam, <laughs> the width of the boats. So weight you can reduce it considerably building in aluminium or even other lighter materials, uh, titanium and so on, but um, and the beam, that's sort of pure geometry, so it's how you organize your boat, how you design your boat. Yeah, choices you have. So what else, uh, what else can we expect from the Silvio Espinoino collaboration uh, in the future? <laughs> Beyond the space cat. Well, we're working on, um, Hull 6 is in production now. Um, Hull was built in China, the superstructure in Australia. They're now making it together in Silver Australia. Two. Say again? That's Silverloft 2, the second Silverloft. Correct. It's sister yeah. ship, yeah, correct. Uh, we're working on hull number seven, which is a complete new design. Uh, and um, in size wise, it's between Silver Fast and, and Bolt. Um, and uh, we're also looking at some smaller boats in, in aluminium, some, some quite small boats, actually which um, again, talking about life cycles and, and, and lifetime for uh, boats, we think is, is a much better material than glass fiber uh, in the long term because they're easily recyclable. So we're looking at some interesting, um, simple developables to uh, developable server surfaces. So this is something that we're, we just started uh, now. So we know there's, there's enough to do. Um, engineering is still largely done in Australia and uh, production is between Australia and China. Though. So we'll see how that goes. And just a quick reminder, so this, the Space Cat will see that on the water for the first time next year. Yeah, correct. Well, I look forward to seeing her. I'm sure she'll be spectacular. Well, we'll, we'll if you want to see her first, you have to go to Asia. We'll, um, hopefully we'll be able to bring her over to Europe. Uh, as well, so yeah, I'd love to take you on board and show you the merits of it. No, we got, I'm sold. I'm sold. I ain't catamaran. You're sold. I'm sold. I'm absolutely sold. first order sold. Good. I'll, I'll buy hold. I'll buy hold too. We can make you the boat at the national uh, <laughs> headquarters at the boat shows. You know. Yeah, I'd like that. I'd like that. That'd be good. When's your next video call today? Probably in five minutes. Uh, no, I got a lunch appointment. The Yacht Club has just opened, so uh, first lunch at the Yacht Club. Uh, a good friend of mine. And, uh, and then I'm starting immediately after lunch with uh, our internal um, design review um, video conferences. That, uh, you know, we're 25, so we have slots where we do look at the different projects, um, ongoing new ones, and uh, and uh, so that that a big part of my time is that yeah oh, well, that's and you uh yeah well we're doing a um we're doing a live super yacht quiz uh this afternoon for the industry so i've got to uh finish the script on that uh but i've got another couple of calls before that as well this afternoon you haven't finished the script no no nothing like <laughs> lastminute.com nothing like doing things at the last minute it's the only thing that is the only thing that can motivate me is doing it at the absolute last minute Terrible, terrible way of All working. Right. Anyway, All right, it's, All been, right. it's been a pleasure. Have a good lunch. Been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. Same to you. And Take uh, care. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.